Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, this storm is getting even stronger. Not only do they still expect for two days now baseball size hail going into Oklahoma, up to baseball size hail going towards southern Texas. So it has strengthened up. Plus, if you saw my update on my community page yesterday, now they're expecting significant tornadoes today. That's at least EF2 and wind damage or tornadoes for today. So that's going to be pretty strong. Plus, we already have a tornado watch out this morning. This is right where I see some helicity values coming through, and they did get some cells get tornado worn as it goes through Louisiana. With some damage and winds passing through as well. So it's a lot of severe weather going through the south. And I do expect something especially for northern Louisiana today. But right where we saw that strong helicity values yesterday is right where we had a lot of hail and a lot of tornadoes. Now we had about 10 to 12, maybe a little more of tornadoes yesterday. Some could have been recycled. We had tornadoes in Arkansas. We had them in Kansas. But right where we saw that strong helicity values in northeastern quadrant of Colorado is right where a lot of tornadoes touched down. Thankfully, no damage has been reported yet, but there has been a lot of hail and it was crazy on the roads. And remember, all these videos are in the description, so you go watch them. They had a crazy tornado form up in Colorado all evening. You watched the whole thing from the building to the touching down to the going away. So make sure you go watch that video if you want to see this. It's in the description. Plus, with all that hail falling, look how it was on the interstates going through Colorado. It was so much, it just literally looked like snow on the ground, guys. This was very dangerous because it is ice after all, and you can get some slip and slide and some wrecks. It was so thick, the ice barriers were about two to three inches thick, and they just drove around them. That was a lot of hail. And look at this amazing shot that went through Kansas yesterday. That is amazing. So for today, we do have these thunderstorms that's going through Louisiana. They will be going through southern Arkansas and going into Mississippi as well. While we get these group of thunderstorms growing up for Oklahoma as it goes through Nebraska, Kansas, some more of Colorado, bringing a lot of snowfall up to three feet. And then for tomorrow, it's going to grow again. Another nasty front all the way down to southern Texas. And we still have all this flooding that's still coming after that. So as we look a little bit closer, we can see down here from northern Louisiana, you get some nasty cells that pass through all evening long. And it does go further towards Mississippi and get some nasty hail cores by 7 p.m. as that passes by the north shore of Louisiana and southern Mississippi. Some pretty strong storms. Plus, as we go into this afternoon, this is where it's really going to wind up as it goes through Kansas, Nebraska, and then we start getting some nasty hail cores going through Oklahoma. And they're actually expecting two days of baseball-sized hail, like that hail core right there. You see how that's in the black? That is some very large hail right there. So we have a bad banding going through Oklahoma definitely for today. Looks like it sparks up right around 6 o'clock going by Oklahoma City, strengthens up by seven, still goes by eight, and then it turns into a damaging wind event after that. But this is bringing some bad banding towards Kansas and Nebraska as well as you go all evening long. The pivot point is just right here in Colorado and they are getting a lot of snow. And you can see that here, some very big banding that's going across Colorado. Matter of fact, the very high peaks as it warms up is still gonna to continue to get snow all the way until later tonight. That is bringing over two, potentially over three feet of snow. So here's your latest on National Weather Service. You can see that big enhanced section that we do have, and we have a new slight risk in the south, and that will help towards tornadoes. Right to where I showed you, northern Louisiana going towards Mississippi with a 2% and a 5%. Plus you have over here for Oklahoma, Kansas going into Colorado, not only the big 2% as this winds up, the big 5%, the big 10%, plus you have the significant severe in this black. Significant severe under the tornado category is EF2 strength or stronger. So here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for today, with a significant severe being on the top. 
Plus, you still have your wind threat for today, and you have your hail threat. And you can see how it's growing. You got 5% going all the way up towards the Dakotas. But you have this big 15% in the yellow. You have the big 30% in the red, and a significant severe covering Kansas, Oklahoma, going into northern Texas. That's at least 2 inches in diameter, very large hail. But here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today. And the large hail is the white line on top. And you can see this from National Weather Service. Scattered severe thunderstorms are expected this afternoon and even across parts of the Great Plains centered on Kansas and Oklahoma. The greatest threat for at least a couple strong tornadic supercells should exist across central Oklahoma between 5 to 9 p.m. Central Time. Isolated severe storms, including a couple of tornadoes, are possible across parts of lower Mississippi Valley. Now you can see here on your significant tornado perimeters it factors in dew points, wind shear, everything that helps produce a rotating atmosphere and you can see after you go from 5 to 6 p.m it starts intensifying for kansas then as you go towards 8 and 9 p.m it intensifies for northern texas then it goes towards oklahoma later this evening even after the 9 p.m hours it's showing up to 11 and 12 o'clock you still have a chance for some strong supercells that could create a tornado it's stronger at 11 p.m this is the 12z from h triple r so i'm showing it's actually possible past 9 p.m so you can see as you go towards noon and towards the early afternoon you do have some strong cells passing through louisiana going into the southern mississippi not too strong for mississippi but you start getting a lot of cells for colorado kansas going into nebraska before you get to 5 and 6 p.m then it sparks up on those cells I showed you going by Oklahoma City all the way to 9 p.m., even 10 p.m., but they are a little strong on those cells. And then as you go later on, you see how it kind of dies down on the chances for the updraft. But for tomorrow, it's going to spark right back up as you go through Nebraska all the way down, that big front going all the way into southern Texas. Chances for strong updraft, either a large hail or a chance for a strengthening cell, maybe a tornado. So here's some very critical information for Oklahoma. As you can see, for today, it has enhanced up. Your tornado threat has moved up towards medium. They're still expecting baseball size hail plus 60 to 80 miles per hour. Now, your tornado chance has moved up to the medium section right here. So this is where it has enhanced up, right where I show you those cells. You have a low chance in the green, a very low in the blue. And here's your timing on your severe thunderstorms, chances for either tornadoes, large hail, just severe storms in general. For the section of one, the most likely time is from 3 to 7 p.m. today. For section two right here, it would be from 5 to 10 o'clock tonight. Then for section three, you have it from 8 p.m. tonight all the way to 1 o'clock in the morning. Plus for tomorrow, your tornado chance has moved towards very low, but they're still expecting up to baseball size hail for Oklahoma and 60 to 80 miles per hour wind gusts. Please be aware of that. So Kansas, they have put this out for you as well. You have been upgraded from slight risk with enhanced section as well. So your timing is 3 to 11 p.m. tonight. A few tornadoes, hen egg size hail, and damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour. Plus, there is an update for your severe storms and risk for today for Kansas. So here's your timing from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., then 7 p.m., towards 10 p.m. And you can see the stronger storms will be capable of producing large hail and damaging winds. Tornadoes will also be possible with the highest possibility across south central Kansas. Plus, you can see the threat for tomorrow. So we do have the tornado threat. It's all the way from the southern Texas going all the way towards the central plains and a 5% as that low pressure moves up to the upper Midwest. So here's your cities and states for chances for tornadoes so far for Friday. And you have chances for wind and chances for hail. And look how much distance has grown for significant hail. It's at least two inches in diameter over here for Oklahoma going all the way towards southern Texas and northern Mexico. Here's your cities and states at risk for Friday. And your significant severe hail is the white line on top. Plus, National Weather Service has as strong severe storms are expected to begin during the afternoon across a broad area, extending from the mid-Missouri Valley southward all the way to the Rio Grande Valley. Very large hail and damage and wind gusts will likely be the primary severe threats over the southern half of the area into the overnight hours, while damage and winds and hail and a couple of tornadoes will be possible across the mid-Missouri Valley area through the evening. 
and you can see this for Nebraska. So your hail, your wind, your flooding is all low. Even your tornado threat is low for today. But for tomorrow, it's going to ramp up where your hail is a stronger chance. So is your tornado and your winds, but your flooding is still on a low chance. So just be aware there's a lot going on for Nebraska going into Iowa, into northern Missouri as we go into tomorrow. Plus, for Friday, Southern Texas, do you have a chance for very large hail up to baseball size? Damage and winds 60 to 80 miles per hour with a small chance for a tornado. So just be aware, I will give you an update in the morning, but it's looking like Southern Texas is going to get some very serious storms. Plus, as you go into Saturday, you do have severe weather as well. You have a slight risk going over Iowa, plus over here for Southern Texas. And so far, I can see that for chances for large hail, but we cannot rule out a tornado or two. Here's your cities and states at risk for Saturday. And you can see this on your lightning strikes with the Ural. So you get some bad thunderstorms for today into this evening. But once you go into tomorrow, then it explodes in the south. Over by southern Texas, you even get some across Mississippi, Alabama, and some of Florida. There's a lot of lightning strikes, and this will create your chances to get large hail. And look how much white you're getting in southern Texas now. It's just staying all evening long. Chances for large hail. So let me go back to where you can see it all the way towards northern Mexico. Because it goes all evening long for southern Texas. Then it goes into northern Mexico tomorrow night. So there's a lot of large hail coming out of this as this next negative tilt comes in and brings all these storms and all this flooding. And it is adding up to a lot of snowfall going over Colorado. And the amazing part is that we're in May. Now this isn't going to hit Denver. There's a lot of cities that's not going to get the heaviest of the flow. It's just going to be a few inches for everybody. But over here in the higher elevations, over here by Woodland Park, Going towards a higher elevation, you're starting to get two feet within the next 24 hours. And then over here, it's showing chances almost up to three feet of snow. Now, this is all the higher elevations, is all the bend area. But this is a lot of snowfall falling in May in Colorado. A lot of the main cities, like I said, is going to get a few inches. But over here in the higher elevations, especially Woodland Park, two feet of snow. Plus, as that surface low moves on in for Friday, then we still get a subtropical jet rotating all this moisture into the south. And you can see the update with the 6Z with the Euro way up in the tropopause. As it goes to the upper Midwest, it just does an explosion as you go into Friday afternoon from southern Texas, and it keeps going all afternoon long, all the way into Saturday, goes into Sunday. Even starts going to Sunday evening, and that's as far as we can see with the 90 hours. So if we go into the previous run, you can see it still has that, and maybe into Monday in a little bit longer. It's going to be a lot of rainfall. But just until Sunday, it is bringing a lot of extreme precipitation. Also for the Dakotas, eastern Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska, some of Colorado. A lot of heavy rainfall, even up here in Minnesota. That's all two inches plus all this rainfall. But look over here in the south. Now it's going towards 10 inches still. Now this is additional rainfall on what you already have. And it will help with your drought. That is the good thing out of it. But we're talking about a lot of rainfall in Texas, especially southern Texas. Right on the Mexico border is where the hot spot is for 10 inches plus. This is additional rainfall coming. This is only in the next four days. But you can see also once you go Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it starts adding up to a lot getting 10 and 11 inches now moving all across the border of Texas, Mexico. Just be aware, a lot of flooding coming your way. And you can see this with National Weather Service the next three days. They're expecting all this red, which all three to four inches. And you have that orange right there is getting towards five to seven inches. Two more days later, then you start getting that seven to 10 inches adding up for Southern Texas. Even two more days later, it just broadens out. So obviously they're going with the Euro. You can see with the Euro, all the heavy rainfall rates just in the next five days. But the one thing that's concerning when you look at the GFS, it centers it right over San Antonio. So just be aware that this could shift a little bit more. And as you go for the 10 days, which shows the next few days after, it could add up to more rainfall coming. I will keep you updated. But here's additional rainfall the National Weather Service has you out for. Six to eight inches in all this red, three to four towards Beeville. We start getting eight to 10 inches in all this dark red. So total rainfall is east two to four inches, west four to eight inches. So here's the name of your rivers that are expected to start flooding. In San Antonio, it looks like you're going to get a lot of flooding. 
Now you can see how the flooding does grow. So for tomorrow, it starts moving in that moderate section. For Saturday, that moderate section is going to grow and you're still going to be in a slight risk for Sunday. Also, there is some coastal flooding. So just be aware of that all this green, there is minor flooding that will be one foot above ground level. So it will be some minor flooding along the coast. Just be aware. And the flooding has increased, guys. So for today, you have a big slight risk with the marginal, but now you have a big moderate risk that's going from eastern Texas, northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and you have it for the upper Midwest into the central plains as well. A big moderate level going into northern Kansas, eastern Colorado, southwestern Nebraska, while you still have all this slight risk going all the way up to the Dakotas, all the way to Montana, and it's not going to stop there. It's going to be way more flood, but now it's growing into more of moderate section levels guys so as we go into tomorrow you're still going to be in a slight risk in the dakotas plus the marginal plus you have the marginal for flash flooding in ohio tennessee kentucky valley and for the southeast as well but now for texas you now you have that big slight risk and that moderate risk is growing so you need to watch out for all this flooding especially going into texas this is growing every day we look at it guys then as you go into saturday it's still going to be there you have the marginal for the upper Midwest, but you still have this big slight risk and this big moderate level for flash flooding in Texas. And this is going to create a lot of flooding, guys. Y'all know how it is when you get too much rainfall day after day. Then when you go towards Sunday, it's still going to stick around another slight risk as you go into Monday. It's still going to stick around and be a marginal. A lot of flash flooding still to come. Plus, quick update on the tropics. I do show a potential velocity anomaly starting to head our way as we go towards the end of May. Now let's pick our winner for today for the Solar Weather Station. Dennis Rafferty, congratulations, you are the winner of the Solar Weather Station. Make sure you contact me at this email, weathermanplustoday at gmail.com. That way I can get your address and ship it to you. Thanks again, Weatherman. Thank you so much, Dennis, for watching my channel and supporting me. God bless you and your family. I do hope you do like it. And remember, we are giving away another one for tomorrow, guys. If you've never been here before, this is by Accurite. They're celebrating 80th anniversary this year. So we're celebrating it with them. We're giving one away every other day all year long. We've been doing it for months. Connects to weather on the ground. Connects to National Weather Service. Updates your winds every 17 seconds. Very easy to install. Put it on a pole, on a fence, on your porch, anywhere's level. We'll be giving away another one for tomorrow. So thank you so much for your time. God bless all of you. May you be safe today. Please help share this information to other people in Texas and Oklahoma. Let them know what is coming their way. Because it's getting pretty severe. So I hope you all have prepared for this. Got sandbags if needed. And I hope everything will be okay. We're all just living day by day, literally by God's grace. Amen. Matter of fact, I want to speak to you about that. Ephesians 2, verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. There's nothing you could do, no works you could do to get yourself into heaven. There's nothing we could do. It's all by God's grace that we are saved. So God bless all of you. May you have a very blessed day today. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always keeps his grace upon you every day of your life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a very great day. Be safe, everybody.